Okay, everybody, it is one o'clock in the morning on June the 3rd, 2011, and the clear coat is now on the Dodge Coronet. Mike is here again. Mike's been helping me, show me how to do this. I, we've got three coats of clear on the car now. I put the first two coats of clear on and then uh, just for the sake of not taking a chance on ruining my, my clear coat, Mike went ahead and laid the last clear coat on. Uh, he could do it twice as fast and twice as good, if not better. So he jumped on there and shot it and got it slicked down. Uh, we've got a, got a lot of trash. I'm a little surprised. I don't know if this is normal or if this is just a function of my booth or whatnot. We got a good, good bit of trash in, in the clear coat, but Mike says everything we got will got a buff out. Uh, it looks fantastic. Got a run or two. Uh, nothing, nothing can't be fixed. But uh, she, she be, she be clear coated. Um, had a little issue with the uh, with trash billowing out from the uh, around the trunk and laying in the paint around the trunk. Not sure how that happened. It, got, it was cleaned up pretty good before we did that. Before we sprayed any paint, but it somehow managed to pull shit from the creases and just lay it right up in that trunk. I'm try to turn this air compressor off. What do you think, Mike? Looks good. I like it. It's wild, baby. That's wild. We're going to do some wet sanding. Do some color sanding on this thing. Won't be surprised. There's not a spot or two we have to touch up on the, on the clear coat. Mike has forbidden me from using the buffer. So... We're going to have to hand sand it. Chicken, do you approve? No? Yes? Yes? That was a, that was a yes? I'll take that as a yes. The chicken approves. Uh, if you look over there, depending on how the light hits it, you can see one of the runs right there in that quarter panel, just below that sail panel. And we've also got a run right there on that sail panel. but. Uh, other than the runs that are right there on that sail panel and right there, that's pretty much the only runs we got. We got like a two inch run on the trunk and about a two inch run on the front driver's side fender, but other than that, that's it. Uh, that SPI Universal Clear Coat laid down pretty damn good. If we could have kept the bugs and bugs and trash out of this, this this thing would have this thing would have come out slick as a baby's bottom. Uh, I think I think we can live with what we got. I think this is this is this is a winner. Mike came in over the last few days and worked on the black stripe here on the trunk. We had some fuzziness around the edges from where the uh, the black paint bled up underneath the, the masking. And uh, Mike took some 16th inch pin striping and put it around the edge of the black, sanded up to it, masked up to it, and then we shot a little more pink around the edge there and it really really super cleaned up that that stripe that thing looks that thing it looks super sharp now and uh, the hood scoop's been painted black we clear coated the hood scoop uh, we ran I ran out of clear coat right in the middle of the actual spraying of the uh, of the scoop and it left a real dry orange peel on it and I've spent uh, spent yesterday uh, wet sanding it I actually wet sanded through and got down into the to the sealer uh, in one one or two spots right there on the on the hard edges of it. So it's going to take us a little bit of touch up with the black paint, or I can re-clear it. But right now, Daddy is tickled to death. This this is this is the culmination of a long time of worth of work. Uh, some things that we some things of note for the guys on the internet have been keeping up with my progress. Some things we learned about my paint booth. Um, 
the, the airflow across my paint booth was woefully inadequate. Um, I think a big reason I have so much trunk trash is the fact that there was no filters on this corner of the room to suck fresh air in. Uh, what we did at the last minute here is I took a razor blade and sliced up that plastic over here on this side to let the air cross flow across the trunk of the car. Um, the, the amount of trash over here on the, on the front of the car, which is where the filters are across over there, is a hundred times less than what we got on the trunk. Um, and my negative air machines that I was, I was using for my, for my air movement right here, uh, the filters clog up pretty easily with the uh, paint over spray. I should have split them up and put one towards the front of the car and one towards the back of the car and help help pull that air out of here like that. That would have been that would have been helpful as well. Um, the uh, one thing I want to caution anybody about doing the plastic that I used on my walls for this was just regular old Lowe's six mil plastic. I'm going to recommend that anybody who builds a booth like this, they could probably use the six mil plastic on the ceiling, but on the walls, um, this there's the 3M automotive masking plastic. Uh, it holds it holds the uh, overspray and keeps it from peeling and lifting a whole lot better than the stuff you get at Home Depot. And I think that some of the trash that we might be getting here is the oh is the spray on the plastic lifting from where we were. Maybe you come in here and you uh, test test your black on the wall, get your spray pattern adjusted, and it dries over two or three days, and you come back and maybe you shoot some pink, and you when you go to test that pink, somehow this black flakes off, goes airborne, and uh, flutters around in the air like a confetti and ends up falling in your paint and you don't it's by the time you've done all this you've already you're already in the process of spraying um, better lighting I don't have adequate lighting I needed more lights and I needed I needed lights uh, put at the head and the rear of the vehicle that I did not buy I should have gone ahead and spent the uh, maybe another 30 40 bucks on lights after I've spent all this money on the car I might as well have spent the extra money on the lights just to get this booth built um, more lights across the top I got a dark patch up here by the hood that's uh, that really didn't help at all um, and when we strip the masking off of here I'll see how bad the uh, is that it Mike you peel it off that black right there yeah, that's a, that's a piece of black right there that he's peeled off the, off the plastic right there. That I think maybe some of that stuff is what's flittering around in the air. It's it's dirty in this place up. Um, as the as the negative as you open and close the door, the negative air machines cause the plastic to flex in and out as it as it draws the plastic in. And I think the act of drawing it in and letting it out and drawing it in and letting it out every time the door opens and closes helps loosen that stuff up and lets it just flitter, turn loose and, and float around. Um, Mike, anything else? But if you were gonna if you were gonna build a home built paint booth like this, what do you do you have any other anything else you would do other than the airflow issues and the lighting? No. Maybe space out like you said space out your Yeah. Because I was shocked when he started fire, when he fired up that Awada spray gun uh, the the clear coat on here, it was you you almost literally could not see if you were standing here at the trunk you could not see the nose of the car the the, the fog was so thick in here uh, you know if there were any bugs in here they're probably clear coated to something right now inside this room they're stuck to something clear coated if it wasn't the car it's the masking it's the it's the walls, it's the floors. It just—it really didn't move the air across here anywhere near what we what it needed to. And it's already it's already dry to the touch. So yeah, we're 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 in good shape right now. So. Uh, let's see how that we'll see I'll post some more pictures of it once we get her buffed and start putting chrome back on it and start getting her reassembled wish me luck